Hey everyone, it is Paul and Jenny. And as you can see, we've got a great little setup here because tonight we're going to talk Halloween Horror Nights 25 and uh, we're going to sample some pumpkin beers. What's that shirt you're wearing? Oh, I'm wearing my Halloween Horror Nights 18 from 2008 shirt. Uh -huh. um, I'll give you a better look at it here in a second. But just to give you a quick idea of the spread, we've got lumpia, we've got pierogies, cheese, apples, and we've got seven kinds of pumpkin beer we're going to try in today's video. Just little samples to start. And um, we'll see if you can convert me because generally I'm not a pumpkin beer fan. All right, let's see how it goes. Hi, I'm Doug Jones and you are reading Ideology of the To give you a brief look at what we're going to be drinking today, Kentucky Bur Pumpkin Barrel Ale, Goose Island Autumn Ale, Ooh. New Highland, or excuse me, New Holland Ichabod, the Wilhelm Scream from Magic Hat, Ballast Point Dead Ringer, which is an Oktoberfest beer. And Kyle's favorite from View from the Cheap Seats. Uh, yes, Kyle from View from the Cheap Seats, Shipyard Pumpkin Head. First up, Goose Island Autumn Ale. It is spicy, hop flavors, and dry finish. This is a 6.7 oh. ABV beer, 65 IBU, and this is our first one. All right, so we're going to do our first tasting. Okay. Um, well, before we get started, it is 7.10 on September 8th, and Kyle who is our Ooh. cohort from View from the Cheap Seats. Is man on the Street. Man on well. the Street in uh, Orlando is at Universal Studios right now uh, covering the media preview for Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, I can't wait to see. Yeah, I'm sure he's really view. excited. So keep uh, so check back to ideologyofmadness.com uh, like probably on September 9th, which is probably when you're watching this video, because we'll have pictures, we'll have video, we'll have all sorts of goodies. And uh, definitely check out viewfromthecheapseats.net. I'll put all this information on the video so you can see. To check out Kyle's page because it's awesome. He covers Central Florida events, um, he concerts. He gets his videos out really quick. Yeah. So when he goes to something, you see the information right away. It's great. Yeah. And we are going to be at Halloween Horror Nights 25 next week. Next Thursday we're going to Universal, right? Yeah, next and Thursday then... we'll be down in Florida. Next Friday we'll be there for opening night. So keep it tuned to ideologyofmadness.com. Uh, for more information on how we're going to be covering the event, how you can follow with us live, that kind of thing, because I'll probably be updating Twitter throughout the event. All right. All right. So, first beer. The Goose. Are we doing goose. this together, or are we, you going to go, then I'm going to go? It, should we do it together, like yeah. it's a suicide pact? Mm hmm All right. Goose Island, Autumn Ale. It smells good. Wow. What's the flavor there? There's, there's it, you know, it mentions hoppy flavor, spicy hop flavors and a dry finish. I can see that. I would say that's exactly what it is. That is exactly what it is. Um, you know, I, it's not a pumpkin beer at all. Not at all. No. Not at all. It's but more I, of an Oktoberfest. Um, so you've got a, a yeah. bit of a malt, um, but with more hops than you would normally get. And yeah. It's a red ale, pine aroma. I can see that. Dry finish. I mean, honestly, I don't love it, and I normally like Goose Island beer. Really? I'm right. surprised you don't like it, considering you you like hops. I do, but maybe it's too much, and there's not anything else to really refine it. Yeah, okay. I don't like, I don't, maybe don't like the the hops spice combo. I actually don't mind it. I think it's pretty decent. Um, now, I could drink a bottle. Would I buy a six pack? Probably not. Yeah, I don't know that I'd drink a whole glass of it. Huh? Yeah. Would, would you drink that whole glass of it, even a tiny yeah, glass? Yeah, I think there's glass? something to be said about. I always say to you, take a second sip. So perhaps. All right, take a second sip. Okay. I mean, more flavor. Yeah, you know, I, I like it. The more I drink it, the more I like it, actually. Yeah. Which I guess is true of most beers, right? But if I was doing a tasting and this was one of them, I would probably look forward to the next one in the tasting. This wouldn't be like, a, oh, yeah, I want to stay here, right here on this beer. We probably did start a little high on the IBU scale. 65 oh. IBU is a little high. You should probably go low, low IBU to high. high IBU. Well, why didn't we? Okay, maybe going forward we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, because obviously, you you know, once you get to the higher IBUs, they're more of a palate record. All right, so while we're drinking this beer, we'll let's go over some of the houses. Oh, 
Oh, okay. At Halloween Horror Nights. Okay. All right. You, you go, because I'm going to need a little bit of um, additional information. Okay. So there are nine houses this year. And the one I'm looking forward to the most is Jack's House of Horrors. Okay. And so it is basically uh, a house that recreates some of the best haunted house rooms throughout Halloween Horror Nights 25 year history. Oh, okay. All hosted by Jack the Clown. He's the icon for this year's event. I'm not a big fan of clowns. Okay. I have to look away. I, you can't look away. <laughs> It's dark anyway. So Jack's House of Horrors will be the first house you hit as you enter the park. It'll be on your left. Um, and uh, it's supposedly the biggest house that they've ever done in Halloween Horror Nights history. Oh. So, yeah. Even bigger than last year's Walking Dead bigger House. Bigger than Walking Dead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, we weren't fans of Walking Dead House last year, but that's because I'm not a big fan of The Walking Dead. But I am a huge fan of Jack. I'm a huge fan of Halloween Horror Nights. That's okay. the house I'm most looking forward to. Okay. All right. So Goose Island. Meh. Meh. But I like it, actually. I mean, on the so scale of, on it, I like of it. 1 to 5, I'm going to... Yeah, I wouldn't put it much more than it. I wouldn't give it a 2-5. I'd go 2. All right, I'd give it a... I'd actually give it a 3-5. Yeah. I yeah. like it. I like it a lot. It's a, it's, a, great. it's a red ale with some hops to it. Um, good Oktoberfest beer. So the, I, the more I sipped on it, the more I like it. Next up, Ballast Point Dead Ringer. It's another Oktoberfest. You probably just heard a lightsaber go off. That's... Uh, that's Kyle. <laughs> so this is 6% ABV. It doesn't say what the IBU are. Um, is. is. IBU, IBU is. is. Yeah, IBU is. Uh, but Ballast Point is out of San Diego, California. And so as an Oktoberfest, I'm expecting more of a malty finish. Uh, so we're still not in the pumpkin beers yet, but we're getting there. Okay. All right, Ballast Point, so, next up. Next couple of houses I'm going to talk about. Okay. While we have our dead ringer are some of the uh, uh, intellectual properties houses so they have insidious and they have the purge and they have freddy versus jason yeah that'll be neat i look forward to that and they have the walking dead and they have american werewolf in london so out of the nine houses this year five are intellectual properties licensed properties um they were originally going to have scream oh right there were some problems with the licensor there so they've redone that house to be the purge well that'll be neat i'm a big fan of all of those movie franchises um, so out of those five, now that you've seen Freddy vs. Jason and you've seen Insidious, you've seen I don't know, purge. have you seen American Werewolf in London? No. Ah. And you've seen The Purge. So, you know, out of those five houses, what's, what do you think you're looking for? I think most? I'm looking forward most to The Purge because that's not straight up horror. That's more thriller or that's more suspense. And so how are they going to convert, you know, horror traditions of like bloody and limbs and nightmares and scary characters into just like a really intense house with you know what? i think it'll be an intense house I'm yeah I, I think it's going to be interesting like you don't know what's going to be around the corner like i think it'll be um it'll make me very anxious and that makes me like feel like i'm going crazy and so i like <laughs> that for a brief period of time yeah so the house i'm most looking forward to out of those five i'm looking forward to freddie versus jason absolutely but the one I'm looking forward to the most, I think, is American Werewolf in London. Oh, how you know, so? Um, it is an exact recreation of the house they had two years ago when I was not able to attend the event. Um, Why would they recreate with, an exact house? Because people were fans of it, so they've redone the house. Okay. And they've um, upgraded all the puppets, the werewolf puppets, uh, based on some of the technology they had last year for the Alien vs. Predator house. Oh. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to the special effects. I think they're going to be pretty awesome in that house. And that was a really good house. Yeah, I think it's going to be really technologically advanced. Um, so I'm looking forward to that one the most, I think. Uh, out of those five, that's the one I'm looking forward to most seeing. Uh, and another reason is because John Landis, the director of American Werewolf in London, is going to be there opening night. So we'll be able to uh, probably not meet him, not but show you him from a yeah. distance um, in <laughs> our distance Halloween Horror Nights coverage. Yeah, right. distance shots, zoomed yes. in. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm in the picture, we're still far away. Right. All right, so let's try the Dead Ringer from Ballast Point. Okay. Like I said, 6% ABV. It is copper color. Yeah, quite frankly, not unlike the one we just had. Although that it was smells, a red ale. It smells oh, significantly different, it though. Does. It has a sweeter it smell fruity. to it. fruity, yeah. Hmm. That's yummy. You like that one. I like that one. That's funny. I like the other one more. That's 
so interesting because th this is not as hoppy and the other one I think was well it was that hop spice combo but no this to me is very smooth it is this is a very smooth this is a good Oktoberfest yep um, I could easily drink you know, for an Oktoberfest beer I think this is probably better what what you would be expecting during the fall yeah easy drinking easy drinking out by the campfire that pizza. kind of thing yeah 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 good with pizza pumpkin pie pumpkin pie yeah probably um it's good. It's got a little bit more of a sweet, fruity flavor it does. to it. It's very good. Um, there's not a lot of bite to it. Um, it's deceptively, you know, it's 6%, which is not really high on the alcohol scale nowadays. I mean, no. uh, you know, Bud Light Platinum is 6%, so it's not that You high. get your, like, nines sometimes. Yeah, well, and, and I think we'll probably hit some of those later. Oh, okay. All right, so this was Ballast Point <laughs> Dead Ringer Oktoberfest beer, so available for a limited time. Next up, Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel Ale. Ale brewed with natural pumpkin flavors and spices and aged in oak bourbon barrels. I just poured the Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel Ale, and uh, before we try it, uh, we just saw the HHN 25 Director's Cut TV commercial thing that they have online. I'll show you a little clip of it after we talk here. Um, it's really cool. It's really cool. You know, it's, it's two minutes long. It shows Freddie and Jason and The Walking Dead and Jack and Chance, who are the icons for this year's event. And, uh, you know, I really like the TV commercials, but because we don't live in Florida, yeah, we don't get to see them, except online, you know, that right. kind of thing. If you go find it. And so I'm, I'm really, you know, the fact that they have like a nice long commercial, I don't know that they've done that. You know anything beyond like a 30 second tv commercial in a couple of years definitely build some suspense it'll be cool yeah so very excited all right so let's talk about or let's try this kentucky pumpkin barrel ale it is it is a pumpkin ale Ooh. It smells very pumpkin-y smells barrel-y <laughs> it smells bourbon-y Tastes like alcohol. I mean, it, 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 you can taste the alcohol. You know, yeah, but I get like a little bit of like cherry happening in there. And I well, mean, definitely, says, I guess there's some, well, I don't know, fruity barrel. Yeah, it says contains wheat and pecans. What? Yeah. But it, no, I like this one. Mm -hmm. I like a bourbon barrel aged beer. And so, uh, and I like a pumpkin beer. So you mix yeah, the two. Yeah, that's good. That's, no. that's good. That's even better in the uh, second sip. Yeah. You, you get more bourbon and more flavor from that, from the oak age. Maybe the that's why I like it. Than you do from the pumpkin. I don't, I don't, I'm not yeah. getting a strong pumpkin vibe off of that. Super subtle and honestly in the back end, as they say. So when, after you, you know, it sits there a minute, mm -hmm. there's like this sense of pumpkin. Yeah. But not like pumpkin pie. No, no. Yeah, more just like yeah, straight up pumpkin flavor. Yeah, agreed. And uh, like I said, 10%, so it's a butt kicker. So, oh, it's ten percent. Oh, yeah. So yeah. sit at home and drink that. As well. Next up, the Wilhelm Scream from Magic Hat out of Burlington, Vermont. This is a pumpkin ale. Uh, let's see, three fourth pint of ale brewed with pumpkins and spices. Okay. It is five point four percent ABV. And we're going in. We're getting more and more pumpkin-y as we go along. Okay. That's good. Idea. Yeah. So while I pour the Wilhelm Scream, let's talk about the other three houses. So the final three houses that we haven't talked about are all original properties. There's Run, Blood, Sweat, and Fears, which the concept kind of sounds like the Running Man to me. It's something they've had before in Halloween Horror Nights previous years, but... I've not actually been to a run house before. We get to run through it? Mm hmm. Maybe. You make me run. Someone tell us in the comments if you've been to a run house before how it works. Am I wearing sneakers to this or sandals? So there's also Alice in Wonderland 3D, which is yeah. what a 3D has this year. How do I feel about that? Huh, why do you say that? Because, first of all, Alice in Wonderland in its purest form is disturbing and creepy. So you know how you feel about it from a you're going to be scared kind of. I already know how I feel about the fact that like I don't ever want to watch it because it's disturbing. So if you take Alice in Wonderland and you twist her all up and you put her on steroids and you make her scary, I don't know, maybe like double scared? I don't know. I'm not the hugest fan of 3D houses to begin with. Oh, I'm going to have to wear 3D glasses? Yeah, you have to wear 3D glasses and there's going to be colors and stuff that pop out at you. Alright. A little bit off-putting. Yes, I think that's the point. It's disorienting, that kind of thing. 
great. So Alice in Wonderland 3D, I don't know. Skeptical? We'll see. I'm skeptical. Um, and that one's going to be... Cautiously optimistic? Yeah. yeah. Interested, but reserving advanced judgment. Agreed. Okay. And the final house is one of the ones I'm most looking forward to, which is Body Collectors, Echoes of Shady Brook. Now, the Body Collectors, they've been in Shady Brook, has been in previous years of Halloween Horror Nights. Okay. The Body Collectors are like um, these suited figures, um, tall, they have like bald are heads. Are we talking hazmat feet. or are we talking beekeeper? I'm sorry, like not even, um, like like tuxedo type suits. Oh, like black, okay. Like black suit, white shirt type. Okay, more type formal. Individuals. Yeah, but they have crazy eyes and big teeth, and you know they, you know they they kill people and collect their souls. They sure. collect bodies, um, and this you time know. they they've combined two. HHN has combined two of their franchises by putting the body collectors in with Shady Brook. Now Shady Brook's popped up in a couple of years. Um, it's in a uh, haunted asylum, and so they've got a couple of different. And in fact, Shady Brook pops up in a scare zone as well. Oh this year. right, I remember the police car from Kyle's video. Yeah, like okay. escaped inmates, and so okay. this is, I believe, takes place in Shady Brook Asylum after it's been abandoned. Okay. And uh, features the body collector, so it's kind of like a crossover house. Okay. So what do we need. Yeah, I think the body collectors are really cool looking, so I'm looking forward to this house. Okay. And I'm looking forward to this beer. Okay. Wilhelm Scream, uh, pumpkin ale. Packed full of pumpkin. I can smell it already. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. Yeah. Oh, but you know, I don't know. When you first uh, taste it, big pumpkin, I get. But then it kind of smooths out. Changes a little bit. No, I'm going, I feel it smooths out. I'm going for my second sip. All right. Mm. You like this? Yeah. I don't think I like this actually. I think it has like a complex flavor. So I get like this initial pumpkin happening, but then, you know, as you, you know, swallow it and leave it in there, it seems to change a bit. See, I, Not I'm too more much a fan of, of thing. pumpkin spice than I am of pumpkin itself. And pumpkin spice is essentially like cinnamon and nutmeg and crap. It's not yeah. actual pumpkin. <laughs> um, you know, your cinnamons, your nutmegs, your crap. Yeah. Your, your tasty crap. Right. Um, but this is this is pumpkin-y. It is. Um, not pumpkin spicy. And, you know, it's a pumpkin ale, and that's what you go in for. Um, no, I like this one. So, yeah. so, Jen recommends it. I'm on the fence about it. Next up, recommendation of Kyle from View from the Cheap Seats. Shipyard Brewing Company's Pumpkin Head. Ale with natural flavor added. That's all it says. Yeah. I don't know the ABV. I know, 4.5% ABV. But it doesn't really give much more description than that. Aside from drink me. Aside from drink me. So we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to ask you, last year was your first year at Halloween Horror Nights. It was HHN 24. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I wanted to know what your favorite house was. There were eight houses last year. Okay. There was Walking Dead. Right. Alien vs. Predator. Right. Dracula Untold. Right. From Dusk Till Dawn. Right. Giggles and Gore, Halloween, Dollhouse of the Damned, and Roanoke, Cannibal Colony. So I liked Halloween, I would say, by far. It just felt so authentic. It felt like a horror fan's horror. It just, it just felt like it hit on all, all cylinders on that. From the gross me out i cannot believe that people think of these things dollhouse of the damned for me was just like oh wait this is twisted i would say that yeah i would say how i would agree halloween is my favorite house by far because i love halloween but i think dollhouse of the damned very close second even though i just said by far with halloween but dollhouse <laughs> by, of the damned, far. by far close second then close second um i like the roanoke concept i like the roanoke concept because it is, it is based in some historical fact i or, like the roanoke but it seems like and a lot of people seem to not like that but i really like the house i feel like there were well they had a good story they wanted to tell but i don't yeah. think they told it in a way that made sense uh, besides we just have cannibals here if you're going to compare some of the degree I mean, you know, the, of, of some of the houses, which have so complex and so much detail, and not that Roanoke did not, mm -hmm. but the story involved in some of those houses was just room after room, so much, you know, thought and put into so much of the detail and the scariness and everything. Roanoke was 
kind of an overall concept. It yeah. wasn't room after room after room of straight up horror. But I liked that it was based on the fact that it was, you know, it's a real place yeah. and it's not far from where we're from yeah. in Virginia. So it was kind of like, hey, that's in our backyard. It, I don't know. It was just a neat idea. Yeah. You know, um, From Dust Till Dawn is a house I was really looking forward to. And I think in the dark, it worked extremely well. I think oh, we did a lights on tour. And check out did. ideologyofmadness.com. There's going to be a ton of pictures from last year. The lights on tour is a neat idea, though. And if you get the chance to do that, that's worth doing. Because it does give these houses in a whole different perspective. You can really appreciate what the creative yeah. um, people go through to get those houses together. Well, let's talk about that a little more. But let's try our shipyard. Okay. So shipyard, pumpkin ale. No, that's pumpkin. Pumpkin head, excuse me. Pumpkin head ale. Pumpkin pie, slice of pie, I think we're dealing with right here. It smells good. It smells nutmeggy, cinnamony. Ah, ooh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is pumpkin spicy all the way. Yep. I can see why this is Kyle's favorite pumpkin beer. Yeah, because it goes in pretty mild, and then bam, pumpkin hits you. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's it's light, it's easy. and You can easily, you know, get out a nice big old sandwich. Yeah, this isn't just and a Halloween beer. You could, I would drink this with, you know, like a Thanksgiving dinner. Absolutely. Or, yeah, this yeah. is good all through fall. I, I doubt they make it all through fall because they switch over to Christmas stuff. Like oh, in this October. particular brand does? I don't know about Shipyard. Shipyard, but I know most companies. That's excellent, though. Yeah, this is this is fantastic. So yeah. good recommendation to Kyle. Yeah, definitely. So we decided to skip the spooky from Blue Mountain Barrel House. We'll give you a review of that in another video. But what we are going to try is New Holland Brewing's Ichabod Pumpkin Ale. This is probably my favorite pumpkin ale. Ale brewed with pumpkin and spices with spices added. Oh. Yes. So New Holland Brewing. Double spice? Double what, spice. What's the ABV happen? It is 5.2%. It's not bad. ABV, not too bad. Real pumpkin, cinnamon and nutmeg enrich this amber brew. Pairings, roasted poultry root vegetables, peanut sauce, and caraway. We have none of that on our plates. Uh, yes, we have none of that. We have lumpia, apples, <laughs> and cheddar, which are dwindling away. So let's try this uh, Ichabod and talk a little bit more about Halloween Horror Nights. We're not from Florida. We don't live in Florida. I'm not a Halloween Horror Nights expert. This is going to be my eighth year though going? I would say you're not not an expert. What makes you not an expert? Well, I don't live down there. I haven't been like every year. I don't go more. I typically only go once a year because. Oh, you mean, okay. I see what there you're are saying. people who go three weekends in a row or every day. Right. No. Okay. I've been Fair to 13, enough. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 24, 24, and now 25. So this will be my eighth. Okay. Very cool. So um, if you have not been to Halloween Horror Nights before, you're interested in going. Um, what I will say to you is that uh, this year with nine houses, it is pretty much guaranteed that with lines, you are not going to get through everything okay. in one night. Okay. If you only have a one night pass. Um, so either plan for two trips. That's good information. I think people could be um, under the impression that they could go through them. Yeah, they could go bang out nine houses in a night. It, it's hard enough with eight houses. What I would recommend is there are a couple of different options, right? You can get, a, a, I think, a one-night pass if you don't have a day pass to Universal Studios, so you're not staying and screaming or anything like that, um, is 100 bucks. Okay. Though I believe a stay and scream pass is probably 65 75 bucks. It's a little cheaper if you have a daytime pass to Universal Studios. Okay. Um, and there are... All this information is on the site, so these are rough estimates. Um, they offer an express pass. I would not do it without an express pass um, because those lines get 60, 90 minutes long, um, sometimes upwards of 120, depending on a Saturday night for some of the more insane uh, crowded houses. But what I would recommend is do the RIP tour. Right, there's that. The RIP tour is going to just a little bit more expensive. Than the express, than the than the cost of a regular ticket plus an express pass. What comes with an RIP tour? So the RIP tour, you get not just front, you get front of the line access in that. Like you cut in front of everybody. You right? cut in front of everybody. Okay. You go straight into the house. Um, you get a guided tour. You get reserved seating at the Lynn's Head. It oh. is absolutely worth the cost of admission. 
Okay. Um, so highly recommend doing and do, that do instead they take of you the from Express house, Pass. They take you from house to house. They don't just take you through. Like they take you to the next house. Yes. So they take you to the house, and then when they wait for you at the okay. exit, or they walk through with you, and you get some tidbits, and you get a nice tour guide along the way. You get a special lanyard, that kind of thing. Okay. And that's available on HalloweenHorrorNights.com. So highly recommend getting those. And also recommend an Unmasking the Horror tour. Yeah, um, I remember that. Those are the lights on tours of the houses. They're offered during the day. Um, I recommend doing it after you've been through the house so as not to spoil some of the surprises for you. But it gives you a whole different perspective yeah. on the house. I would do it afterward, definitely, because then you see the science behind it. Mm -hmm. And you can appreciate the creativity, whereas when you're going through... If you're like me, you just want to get through it and survive it. And you don't... I try to take a look at the detail as I'm survive. going through... But sometimes I just want to get through a room and I don't think about, oh, what's on the ceiling? What's on the floor? What's on the walls? What's on the couch? What's in the crib? What's what's in the doorway? I just don't think about that. Mm -hmm. If somebody has opened up a door and screamed, I pretty much like jet out of the room. And um, when you go back through and the lights on tour, you not only, if you get a really good tour, because I think we got a good tour guide last yes. year, didn't we? And they give you a lot of information, a lot of background information. They take a lot of questions, which wind up being things I think about hey yeah i'd like to know that and i don't think to think of the question so um i would do that in that order go to the houses first when they're their truest form and then go to the um the lights on tour so you can see all the detail behind it and it's not a cheap prospect to do all of it but if you do those two things combined you will get everything out of the event that once you a year want. i mean if you save up for it something that you know Absolutely. you might be able to budget in all right so let's try the Ichabod. Okay, the, so the last beer of the night Right, where's the where's the Ichabod from? Did we say from that? New Holland? New Holland is in Holland, Michigan. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Just okay. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Hmm. No, I love it. You do. Yeah. It's in a love. Th this is my favorite pumpkin beer. Really? Yeah. Why? I like it's pumpkin. I'm going spicy. to my own advice to the second sip. Yeah, go with the second sip. It, it's not as strong flavor-wise as the shipyard. I will give it that. So, I am sure New Holland makes a fine beer. It just tastes soapy to me, and we didn't, we haven't, like, we didn't, I didn't just pre-wash that glass. Soapy? Hmm. There's a soapy smell to it, which was a concern. Hmm. Weird, huh? Yeah, very weird. Yeah. We're getting very different flavors off of it. I get a lot of pumpkin spice. If you're a fan of pumpkin spice lattes, that type of flavor, you're really going to love the Ichabod. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of spice in there. I don't know that I'd say pumpkins compared to the pumpkin beer that we've had. but Yeah, it's more, again, cinnamon, nutmeg, that yeah. kind of thing. Less pumpkin straight flavor. but uh, And that you've just washed the glass and had the beer because it's no, got it that soapy anything. finish. No, no soapy. But it is also, uh, it does have the Headless Horseman on it, and it's named after Ichabod Crane, so it gets some bonus points in my book. Okay. So I'm giving this a 4.5, I think. What? Yeah. Almost the best ever? No, not almost. What's your shipyard score? See, I'm reserving anything beyond a 4, because I've only ever had, like, It depends. Are we only in 0.5 or 0.25? I'd give shipyard 0.25, 4.25. See, I'm going solid four on the shipyard. That was my favorite of the night. And you're calling this soapy. So what are you giving this like? Soapy's got to go, I don't know, one and a half. I feel the effort what? there, but it probably my least favorite of the night. Hmm, that's a shame. Yeah. Well, more for me. Not really a shame. <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in. Check out more ideologyofmenace.com. We are covering Halloween Horror Nights, media preview night, yeah. as mentioned before. That coverage is on ideologyofmenace.com. It's happening probably, as we speak. It is happening as we speak. So it's probably September 9th. It will be there for you guys. Yeah. And we'll be covering the event throughout the next week. And after that, we'll be going to Bush Gardens Hollow Scream in Williamsburg. Ooh. Um, we'll be going to a number of Halloween events throughout this season. So definitely check out Halloween. Well, check out HalloweenHardNights.com. And check out ideologyofmanace.com. And check out View from the Cheap Seats. Dot net. Um, <laughs> for our. Uh, you know, Combined our buddy Kyle. coverage. Yes, our, our superhero team up. Yes. With the uh, view from the cheap seats uh, to cover the event. So yeah. thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.